As you can tell, guys, I started with the mic too close to my face. As I move the mic slightly down, the sound gets better. So next time in the next video, I'll see you. Move the mic down. Um, previews, reviews, whatever I do now. So hopefully, you know, gradually getting there. I need to get one of them special little lights. That's the next thing to go and get. Anyway, guys, this is our preview of Everton versus West Ham that kicks off at 2.15 tomorrow. A massive massive game. It is a must win even at this stage of the season. If Everton were to win this game, they would open up a gap away from that bottom three. Again, not a massive gap, but psychologically even at this stage, going into an international break, it could you know, create huge, huge problems and it, you, you start looking at it and thinking this could be a long, long old season. Um, they currently sit in 17th, a place above us. They've played six. They've not won yet, which again, West Ham coming to town. Um, they've drawn two, lost, uh, sorry, drawn four, lost two. Um, like I say, currently sit on four points, exactly the same as us, but um, like I say, if they win, they go three points ahead of us, and it just gets a little bit nervy down there. Um, the last few results have been four draws in a row with a good good draw against um, Liverpool in there as well. Their last game, obviously, like us, their game was cancelled at the weekend. Um, they had the luxury of having a week's rest. Obviously, we played out in um, Sittborg in the week. So they have had a little bit of a rest. Um, looking at their transfers, guys, they obviously nearly every player they were bought in were players that could have been playing in the West Ham shirt. Nearly every player. The first three that I read out, obviously Tarkovsky, we were linked with him for a very long time. They bought him in. McNeil, we were linked with him for a very long time to go and play on the left hand side. Um, on Nana, obviously, what sort of reception will he get? Gavity, he scores. It's just how it works against West Ham. Other big players they've bought in is Mulpire, who's got a very good record against us, obviously, formerly of Brighton. Um, Garner's come in as well. Idris Agay, former player, used to be an absolute unit, whether he's still got that same ability now. He obviously, he's 35 now, slightly older. Um, remains to be seen. And obviously, Connor Cody, a very good centre back, come in on loan. Um, out for their major outs. Delph, Deli Ali's gone out on loan. And obviously, the big one was Richarlison, um, a guy, again, who loves scoring against West Ham. Um, looking at their injuries, Pickford's definitely out for this game. Obviously, did it, not in the England team either because of that. Dominic Calvert-Lewin could be fit for this game, or at least fit for the bench, according to um, the Toffees website. Um, Yuri Min is out for this game as well. And also, the Corey is another one who could be fit for this game. That could be quite a beast of a midfield. Idris Agay and Nana and Decore in that midfield. Um, could be a real physical battle in that midfield. And, you know, we've got to be ready for that if that is what Lampard decides to play. Um, their strengths are creating chances with the through ball. They play through the middle quite a lot and steal the ball. Uh, they're very good at stealing the ball. Like I say, those sort of players, the, guy, the Idris Gays, the Ananas, all good at that sort of thing. Um, and creating sort of scoring chances is also listed as a strength. Their weaknesses is possession, keeping hold of it, um, finishing their chances, uh, avoiding offsides, defending long shots, uh, defending against set pieces, defending aerial duels as well. Their style of play is loads of shots. Long ball, and they play through the middle, like I say. like to play the 4-3-3 formation. Uh, like I say, we'll pick for that. Probably Begovic will go in goal. Um, you'll probably have Cody and Tarkovsky at the back. Um, and a midfield with Anana. Maybe Idris Gay comes in. Move my play up front with Gordon. They're probably their star player, Gordon. Nearly, very, very nearly joined Chelsea. Um, and then Gray on the other side. So, like I said, they've got, they've got threat. They've definitely got threat. And it's, you know, it's not going to be an easy game. Um, we need to be ready for this game. In terms of records, Lampard, as a manager, has come up against us four times. He's only beaten us once and never, ever been a draw this game. Um, and have lost. Three, he's lost three times against us. Uh, Lampard versus Moyes, just one game less. They've played three. Uh, Lampard's beat Moyes once, and Moyes has had the better of him twice. Um, in terms of us guys, we'll probably play that formation, that 3-5-2 that can transfer into a 3-4-2 when we're... Uh, sorry, 3-4-1-2 when on the attack. Um, you would assume Fabianski would come back in goal, probably Zuma and Kura at centre-back, um, Emerson at that left wing-back role, uh, Super on the right side, um, maybe Oggy or Cresswell in there, 
like I say, it's loose on what I've put up on the screen there. Uh, Rice and Sochek in the middle, even though I would like to see Rice and Downs, because I think the passing between the three, obviously Paqueta at the top of the diamond, um, I think could be really effective, Rice, Downs and um, Paqueta, but you've got to expect Sochek to play, because Moyes just won't drop him. I, I know he didn't play in the week, but yeah, I would like to see a more... Going forward in the next few weeks... I'd like to see Downs used a bit more just to see what he can do in the Premier League. He looked really, really good in that game a couple of weeks ago against um, FC ESB. Um, and then up front, um, it'll probably go with a tried and tested Antonio and Bowen, even though I think Bowen should be dropped. I don't think Bowen's been playing very, very well this season. Um, and maybe another one just needs a little kick, you know, just like a... Look, there is someone there who can step into your shoes. It's not that I dislike Bowen, but if a player's out of form... You know, there's no room for sentiment in the Premier League. You have to be ready to go. I personally would, I really want to see Antonio Scamacca start a game together. I think that could be really, really interesting. Um, obviously, Scamacca scored that great goal in the week as well. But then afterwards, you know, the David Moyes, those comments, it doesn't help. You know, oh, I wasn't happy with him at the beginning and, you know, the touches and not quite there. And then there was another little bit today um, where he was commenting on Haaland, saying that Haaland set an unrealistic target for for strikers, which is true, but then he dropped in the line, Jan Lucas not quite ready yet, he's still getting up to standard. But I, I don't know, is he trying to take the pressure off? But for me it's just like he's trying to kill like stop doing this to players like what about Antonio who didn't score for a long, long time? You never come out and said anything about him not being up to standard and, and ready. You've not said anything about Jared Bowen's form this season so far. Um yeah so, yeah, it's starting to bug me a little bit that with Skamaka because there is a fantastic player in there and he still scored a hell of a lot of goals. You can only score, at the end of the day, who you're put in front of. So, um, yeah, I would like to see them both play, Antonio and Skamaka. We, we, we've got to stop this negativity of, you know, this five at the back all the time. Like, come on, we, we need to start believing ourselves. He, he comes out with the mantra that he wants to be a big team and, you know, big team mentality, yet he sets up negatively every time um, but I'm not Moyes out I'm not Moyes out but I'm allowed to and you know there is a, there is very much a camp at the moment in the West Ham community of you know if you slag off Moyes you, you're Moyes out or you're negative you're negative no, you're allowed in the moment to express how you're feeling and it's not good at the moment yeah the European games are papering over cracks we and even those we're not playing well we're, we're winning games but getting incredibly lucky incredibly lucky in games at the moment in them Europa games so you know something does need to change you know and just to finish off guys there are people coming out with oh you know uh, the Premier League form was misleading you know the Nottingham Forest game we had a goal disallowed the Chelsea game we had a goal disallowed the Man City is Man City um, but at the end of the day it's what, what points are on the board now um, and you know the form in the league since probably about March time has not been good. So look, we had them fantastic nights with Seville and Leon that, you know, we didn't really think about the league. But actually, if you would have looked at the league towards the end, um, you know, it was only that we had a fantastic start that we still finished seventh. We need to maintain it. We need to get back up. We need to start putting little runs together. Anyway, guys, I've waffled on for a very, very long time. Ah, the only thing I didn't do is a prediction. Because I said this is game has never been a draw between Lampard and West Ham or Moyes and Lampard. I'm going to go with 1-1, guys. I think it'll be 1-1. I don't think we'll beat them. Um, yeah. Until next time, guys. Until tomorrow. Paul's back very, very soon uh, for the podcast, which we'll do next week. Enjoy the game, guys, tomorrow. Enjoy this weekend. Obviously, um, you know, God save the Queen, you know, let her rest in peace and let her have a fantastic send-off and hopefully all the Premier League teams get together and do that. And Monday, enjoy your day, guys, and really, you know, take in a moment of history. Until next time, guys, I'm going to drop the mic. Come on, you hands. Keep believing. Let's go. Let me know how the mic sounds. <laughs>